one and two. All righty. Testing, testing. All right. Testing. Good morning, everybody. Just want to welcome you all this morning. And, um, you know, typical of Wellspring, we will have a few more people join us later. This morning, such an exciting day. We have um, four baptisms that I know of so far. And um, so we're really looking forward to what God's going to do this morning uh, on our Wellspring communication. I, I told you to come with an expectation of God speaking to you, using you this morning. And um, so we're just going to stand. We're going to invite the Lord and, um, and then we're going to worship Him. And we're excited to worship the King of Kings. Yes, Lord. There's probably not any words that we could sing this morning that could completely describe God or even do justice to His majesty or even come close to, to Father just describing Your love for us and, and how much love we want to have for You. There's no words, Lord, this morning. But Father, this morning we're going to try. We're going to try and worship You from the bottom of our hearts. So I pray, Father, that no matter what we've been through this week, that we can come into this place right now and we can just get still before you, Lord. That we can, you would help us to just shut those things that are bothering us, shut them down, and just be able to worship you from the bottom of our hearts this morning. Holy Spirit, would you help us to connect to our Father in heaven? Would you tell us the secrets on his heart this morning as we worship? And we come with an expectation this morning, not because... Because us as man can do anything, Father, but because we invite you into this place and we ask you to lead us. So we ask that you would lead this service this morning, Lord. We worship a mighty, mighty God who can do the impossible. So we come with an expectation this morning to learn, to, to have a better understanding of you, Lord. Maybe, Lord, we bring a problem before you this morning and we just, we just ask you to take care of that thing that's been bothering me the whole week or, or a health issue. I pray, Father, if there's sick here this morning, that even where they're standing and just worshiping you, that you would touch them, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And we choose to worship the living God. Amen. Let let every voice, let every voice declare it now. Sing together, my God reigns. My God reigns. His love will never fail me. My God reigns. He's ruling over all. In all my life, in every situation, I know my God is greater. My God is over all. I know. I have a hope so sure. I have a hope so sure. An anchor for my soul. My peace in the worst of times. I trust in God alone. Let every voice declare it now. Lift it up now. My God reigns. His love will never fail me. My God reigns. He's ruling over all. In all my life. In every situation. I know my God is greater, my God is over all, my 
got his overall by faith by faith I have believed and on this truth I stand no power in life or death Take me from his hand. Let every voice declare it now. Oh, my God reigns. His love will never fail me. My God reigns. He's ruling over all. In all my life, in every situation, I know my God is greater, my God is over all. Oh, oh. I know my God is greater, I know my God is greater. Make this declaration above all sickness. Above all sickness, above all fear, above every heartache here, in earth and heaven, my God reigns. Above all power, above all thrones, the greatest love I've ever known. Today, forever, my God reigns. God reigns, His love will never fail me. My God reigns, He's ruling over all. In all my life, in every situation, I know my God is greater. My God is greater. My God is greater. Lift it up now. My God is great. My God, my God is greater. My God is greater. My God is greater. My God, my God is greater now. My God is greater. My God is over God is over My God is over By faith I have believed And on this truth I stand No power in life or death can take me from his hand so let every voice declare it now let's lift our voices my god reigns his love will never fail me my God reigns, He's ruling over all, in all my life, in every situation, I know my God is greater, my God is over all. We submit our hearts and our emotions to you. We submit our lives to you. We submit our fears to you. 
We submit our doubts to you. In the dark, when I feel like the world's apart, and I remember that I'm in your heart with you. You're all I've got. If I really had to count the cost, not a second or a minute's lost with you. You never change. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay the same, and I won't forget. When I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle, my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert, my only drink, fearless. I'll take a stand. My God is the great I am. Whoa, whoa, you're the great I am. You are the God of Moses, the God of Abraham. Oh, you are the great I am. You are life. You are light, you illuminate and give me light. I can see the sparkle in your eyes for me. And in the night, when I'm broken, I will fix my eyes. Your defender and you win the fight for me. Never ever change. You're the great I am. You always say the same, and I won't forget. When I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle, my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert, my only drink. Fearless, I'll take a stand. My God is the great I am. You're the great I am. You're the great I am. Oh, you're the great I am. You are streams in the wilderness. You are water from the rock. You are the Red Sea opening. You are manna from heaven. You are resurrection. You are life. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay the same, and I won't forget. Let's sing that again. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay. You always stay the same, and I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget all your goodness, all your kindness, I won't forget all your provision, Lord. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know, I know you walk with me. I won't forget you have been faithful, you have been faithful. No kingdom, no power, no ruler can stand before the great I am. No army, no weapon, no evil can stand before the great I am. Oh, no kingdom, no power, 
no ruler can stand against the great I am. No army, no weapon, no evil can stand against the great I am. Lift your voice now. No sickness, no pain, no depression can stand against no hunger. No fear, no injustice can stand against no kingdom, no power, no ruler can stand against the great I am. When I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle. My victory in the chaos You are my peace in the desert My only drink, fearless I'll take a stand My God is the great I am Yes, you are, you are, you are The great I am We forget not your benefits You're the great I am You're the same God you're the great I am. Thing you never ever change. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay the same, and I won't forget. I won't forget. You never ever change. You're the great I am. You always stay the same, and I won't forget, I won't forget, I won't forget, I won't forget, I won't forget your faithfulness. He loves us, oh, how He loves us, oh. How he loves us, oh, how he loves us. I won't forget, I won't forget. He loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. I won't forget, I won't forget. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. I won't forget your goodness. I won't forget your promises. You are the great I am. You are the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You are the God of Moses. You are the God of Daniel when he's in the pit waiting for salvation. You are the God of Martha when she is by her brother's grave. And she remembers your resurrection. I will not forget your benefits. Do not let the enemy steal from me the truth of who you are. Put a God, a God over my mind and put a God over my mouth that I would prophesy your goodness that I would prophesy your goodness. When I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is gold in the valley. You are my strength in the battle. You're my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert. My only drink, fearless, I'll take a stand. 
my God is the great I am. I know, I know, I know He's the great I am. We prophesied one more time when I'm empty. When I'm empty, you overflow in the wreckage. Your word is golden in the valley. You are my strength in the battle. You're my victory in the chaos. You are my peace in the desert. You're my only drink. Fearless, I'll take a stand. I'm my God, the great I am. We do not forget who you are, Lord Jesus. Um, I just want to share something that um, God is continuously putting on my heart over um, six months now. But yesterday, Joel, my little boy, he's seven. He told Michael and I, I don't want to be um, rude or anything, but how do you know God is real? I keep going to the bathroom and asking God to show himself. And... Michael and I are just trying to tell him that his questions are not something to be afraid of. He shouldn't have to say, sorry, I don't want to be rude when you ask questions like that. Mm. But um, today, as I was reading the Bible, I realized how important it is that we have to read the whole scripture, not just the New Testament and not just the Old Testament, because God's character is revealed in that. So connecting with Joel's question, um, I realize that sometimes in our lives when we're praying for things, we have um, either a victory like the resurrection, like Jesus, like it's forever, you know, and we know it is forever, like healing, um, breakthrough in your personal life. And sometimes it's manna, like with the Israelites. Sometimes it's daily laying down, daily walking with questions. But I think the biggest, biggest thing is that we don't keep on going to the, to the Lord. And I'm praying that my son will one day keep on going because those questions are not necessarily a once or forever thing. Sometimes it's manna because the Israelites didn't realize that the manna is part of the miracle and they became ungrateful and saying God doesn't love them and then one other thing if you are the person relying on the manna the every day the daily walk of laying down your burdens um, asking for victory you are not less loved than the person who got the victory immediately and forever you're not less victorious you are not, because Jesus died for the victory. You are not the victor in the situation, never. Even if it's a person who says, I'm healed forever and ever. You are not less loved or cherished or victorious in that way. It's just a different journey, because as different as we all are in our personalities and in our lives and our journeys, that is how different God approaches us sometimes especially with our daily walk with the lord so don't keep going to the lord Ugh, don't stop keeping on going to the lord <laughs> so. i want to be just like martha sinking in her doubt I want to hear your voice ring out as the dead come rushing out. I want to sing like the angels clothed in righteousness. I want to hear your voice ring out I want to live again 
I want to live again. We keep running to you, Father of lights. We keep running to you. I just want to invite kids who are welcome to escape and go to, to come and worship the Lord at that side. We're just going to keep worshiping. I want to invite you to bring your tithes and your offerings as part of your worship. And I want to invite you to bring your brokenness and your questions and your hurts as part of your worship. Everything, everything I give to you. Everything, everything I give to you. On yonder hill, the darkness flew, the morning broke in light and dew. Day had come again anew, all we sinners sing. In mark and mire, our wretched soul had fall into the depths below ill deserved but there was hope all we sinners sing from Isaiah 53. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. But surely he took our infirmities. Surely he carried our sorrows. And yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. 
He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. And by His wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is silent, so he did not even open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, although he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offering, his offspring, and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and he will be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, many, and he will bear all of their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great. He will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life even unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many, and he has made intercession for their transgressors. Oh. Mm. Oh. Let's go now. The crimson river like a flood came washing over all of us and it swallowed sin and death right us let all we saints now sing let all we saints let all we saints now sing let's sing it now we're saved Saved, we are saved. The gates of heaven wide open. Saved, we are saved. The key. Just as we worship the Lord this morning, I'd really like us to partake of communion. And just as I was preparing for church this morning, um, I, I felt like I, I, I don't want us to do it as families. I want us to do it as individuals. And, and just as part of worship, especially after reading Isaiah 53, which so powerfully tells us about what Christ did on the cross for us, um, that you come forward and you just have communion, but you have it with the Lord. But I also felt that there's a warning to us this morning that as you come up and take communion this morning and, and take of the bread which represents His body that was broken for us and the, the cup which represents His blood that was shed for us, that new covenant, don't come and take it lightly. If you do not understand or care what Jesus did on the cross for you, do not come and take communion this morning. It would be better for you to leave it but if you want to come and remember what Jesus did on the cross for you, come and partake. But take your time. We're still going to worship the, the Lord this morning. We're not going to rush this part. But come and take part of communion with Him. But don't take it lightly. Don't be flippant about the communion. Um, that's just a warning. So come and worship the Lord through communion this morning. The crimson river, like a flood, came washing over all of us. It swallowed sin and death right up, that all we saints now sing.
shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, 
Lie you on tear down, coming after me. Then no shadow, no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't keep down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, Find me in shadow, find me in broken air. Find me in darkness, find me in shadow, find me in broken air. Oh, come find me in darkness, find me in shadow, find me in brokenness, Lord. Come find me in darkness, find me in shadow, find me in brokenness, Lord. Come find me, come find me, come find me, Lord. Come find me, come find me, come find me, Lord. See the light shines in the darkness, and darkness will not overcome me. See the light of dawn. See the light of dawn. Who is this that appears like the dawn? With eyes of fire, eyes of flame. Who is this that appears like the dawn? Jesus. You come find me in darkness. Come find me in shadow. You come find me in brokenness. You cover me in healing. You cover me in hope. You cover me in forgiveness. Jesus. Still I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. 
He is mighty to save forever. The author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Yes, He conquered my grave. One more time, Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. The author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Yes, you conquered the grave. Come alive, alive, alive. I'm coming alive, alive, alive. I'm coming alive, alive, alive. Oh, I'm coming alive, alive, alive. I'm coming alive, alive, alive. My Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. Yes, He is mighty to save forever. He's the author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Yes, he conquered the grave. Yes. Thank you that you did not come just to prove a point, but to rescue us. Not just to prove that you were righteous where we could not be righteous. But you came to save us. You came to save us. And in our brokenness, and in our weakness, and in our doubt, you come rushing in. Because you love us. As we go to your word this morning, Lord Jesus, let it be your love that comes through most clearly. Let it be your extravagant love. Let it be your love that our hearts are swelling with. We think of those disciples on the road who you met and how when he, you explained to them how all of the prophets spoke about how you would sacrifice because you loved us and you had come to rescue us. Did not our hearts burn inside of us? We ask for that, Holy Spirit. That we would know your love as we go into your word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there's somebody sitting in your row that you have never seen before, why don't you just go up and greet them? We have... Uh, Francis and Shelley are visiting today from, is it Ireland? 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 How, why do we say it like that? Ireland. Uh, we, we almost get that accent, hey? But welcome, you guys. And is there anybody else here for the first time this morning? Nobody's jumped up to greet you guys. I'm really sorry. Um, anybody else here for the first time this morning? You've never come into Wellspring Ministries before? If you decided today's the day, I'm going to go visit those people. I've heard about them and their love for God. Um, but welcome everybody, and um, yeah, I, I'm so excited about this morning's service because there's a lot of things happening this morning, and so where is Clarissa now? With I, I saw her at the back, and then she disappeared. Um, but we have a couple of dedications going on, uh, okay, but we're going to have a couple of baptisms this morning, but we're also going to have a dedication this morning. So as we um, call Clarissa and her, her family up, we, we just, we're going to dedicate a baby. Now, in some churches, they actually baptize babies. And, um, but in Wellspring Ministries, we don't baptize babies, we dedicate babies. So 
we feel, I feel, baptism is a choice that I make. And we've got four young people this morning um, getting baptized. And it was actually their choice to get baptized. Um, they said, this is what the Lord is telling me to do. I want to die to my old self and be raised up new in Christ. I want to identify with Christ. Okay? So it's their decision. Clarissa is going to bring her little baby, Michaela, ne? If I'm right on the name, Michaela. And um, Michaela can't make that decision to be baptized yet. But Clarissa can make a decision to dedicate her daughter to the Lord. So, Clarissa, where is your family? Are they all coming? Good looking bunch of people. In that case, you should have all come up, but you guys missed the opportunity. Kevin, stand. You know what this represents? I love this because this represents, you know, when I gave my life to the Lord, discipleship, it's not just one person that walks this road with me. And when I gave my life to the Lord, they didn't just toss me to the wolves. Uh, but when I gave my life to the Lord, I've had, and I still have many people that walk that road with me. And Clarissa, what you're saying by inviting all these people up this morning, this family, you said, my, can my family come up? So are you saying they're all family? That's good. To, to invite your family up, you're saying, I can't do this alone, but I wanted to have the best chance to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So I love this picture, hey, church? And um, so this is little, babe, will you come and join me here quickly? This is little Michaela. Will she let me hold her? Come, check it out. No, it's okay, it's okay. I, I, w I wouldn't come to this place either. But um, um, yeah, Clarissa, You've got, you've got some amazing people around you. And so as you make that decision this morning, we, we see your decision that you are making, that you want her to grow up in the Lord, that you want her to know the Jesus that you know and that you need help. And so, so the Lord sees your heart. And as you dedicate her this morning, I believe he honors that too. So he honors your heart that you've chosen that your daughter gets to know him. And uh, so church, can we raise our hands towards... Clarissa and Michaela and all the people she's decided are, are family and are going to help her grow Michaela up in the ways of the Lord. And Father, I thank you for Clarissa this morning. Lord, I thank you that this is a decision. Nobody forced her to do this, Lord. This comes from the bottom of her heart, Lord, where she says, I want my daughter to know the Jesus that I know. Jesus, you have done so much for me, and I know you are going to do it for her too. So I pray, Father, as Clarissa makes that decision this morning, as you honor that, Lord, that you would also just give her all the wisdom and knowledge that she needs to grow little Michaela up in the ways of the Lord. Lord, may she have all the wisdom and all the answers and all the, would you, at the right time, Lord, would she be able to teach her daughter exactly what she needs to know about the wonderful love of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, little Michaela, that she would always know you, Jesus that she might not always understand your ways, but she would always know that there's a Jesus that loves her. And as she grows in you, that she would get that understanding. But as a young person, just that Jesus loves her is going to be good enough for her. Hmm? That he would know, that she would know Jesus as her father in heaven, that she would know that she is a father in heaven that loves her and watches over her and protects her daily. And Father, um, I just, I see a picture of discipleship here today. So I pray that every person that is up here with Clarissa, Lord, that at the right time, Lord, that they would step into little Michaela's life and even Clarissa's life and just offer the discipleship that is needed in that moment so that she can grow in Jesus Christ. Would you bless and protect this family, Lord? Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool beans. How did you do, photographer? Cool. I haven't forgotten the announcement, Cherise. Don't worry. You can do, I'll call you up. All right. Um, let me put this in the middle, just for the German folk in church. How's this, Benny? Good? All right. So, all right. Um, I am also a little bit pedantic about straight lines and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's not just you guys. Um, morning. Did you guys enjoy reading Acts 8 this week? And Isaiah 53. 
uh, the, the word that we worshipped over this morning, or worshipped with this morning. And um, so, so we're going to look at um, Acts quickly this morning. And, and God is actually really cool in how He does things sometimes. Because even though last week I knew that I'm going to preach in Acts, uh, Acts 8, I didn't know which part of Acts 8 the Lord wanted me to talk on. And so on, on, on Monday, I was sitting at home, and I, was, I just had my Bible open on the couch, and I was just reading Acts 8, and I was kind of asking the Lord, because I said, Lord, I see kind of three stories in there. Is there one that you want me to focus on or take a point out of each one? What do you want me to do? And at that moment, a uh, gift texted me, and he wanted to come and see me. He had two questions for me. Um, where do babies come from? And then... <laughs> Um, no, he didn't ask that question. <laughs> he didn't ask that question. But his second question was, he said, um, Sheldon, can I be baptized? So I said to him, Gift, that's a great idea. Um, what about this Sunday? And he said, so soon. I said, hey, man, all your friends are getting baptized. Uh, this is a good Sunday. And as I said that to him, I looked over at my Bible, which was next to me, and I, I just felt the Lord say, Philip and the Ethiopian, that's what you need to talk about, because there's baptism in there too. So I thought that was cool. So I'm just actually going to focus from verse 26 this morning. And uh, we, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, because I'm really going to trust that you read it this morning, and that, or, or maybe this morning, but the whole week, and then Isaiah 53. But remember last week we ended with Stephen's persecution, okay? So Stephen was persecuted, he was stoned, um, he, he was martyred, okay? The first martyr in the church. And verse chapter 8 starts with, On that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea um, and Samaria. God, godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. So there was kind of Stephen's... Um, persecution was kind of a tipping point at that stage, and, and suddenly persecution broke out all over the place. And, and God used this. Remember that, that God turns all things for the good of those who love Him. Hey? So there was people that loved the Lord, and the church was getting persecuted, and as they scattered, um, they took the Word of God with them. They never kept their mouths shut, and the Word started to go. And then we, we read about the second um, second, Philip is, the, is one of the seven that was, was mentioned in um, Acts, was it six when they were choosing the seven, yeah. Um, so we looked at Stephen and then Philip. And so, so the Bible tells us that Philip was doing a really good job. Hey? He was very, doing a really good job in Samaria. The word of God was going out. It was going out so far that, that a word got back to the apostles in Jerusalem and they actually sent people to go see what's happening in Samaria. And um, so Philip was full of wisdom and the Spirit of God, okay? He was doing a good job in Samaria, um, but there's a scripture that we started to, that we read early in Acts that said, uh, when they, when they um, questioned the disciples, they said, and we saw that they were ordinary men. And I want you to know that Philip was an ordinary man. We cannot read this and think this guy had a superpower that we don't have and we'll never be able to do what he did. He was an ordinary man just like you and me, but he was filled with the Spirit and given wisdom by God, okay? He was an ordinary man, but what sets him apart from us? He was ready, hey? And so I have that question to you, church, this morning. Are you ready? And a couple of weeks ago, I challenged you and I said, do you know if somebody had to come to you and say, can you show me some scriptures on why I should surrender my life to Jesus? Would you be able to show them scripture in the Bible? Do you know scripture? And if you don't know, you need to, you need to know. And you can always come and ask somebody. He was ready. That was one of the things that set him apart from us. Uh, 2 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Does that describe you this morning? Do you preach the word? Are you prepared in season and out of season? Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. 
That's why I think if you've walked a road with the Lord, and I to say to you, hey, don't you want to share something this morning? You should be prepared to share something. Because you've actually um, read your Bible this morning. You know? Um, you've you've, you've um, been spending time with God this week. Maybe you have a testimony, but all of us should have something we should share. We should never be at a point in our, our lives where we're like, I have nothing to share. Because if you just give me two seconds, I will think of something the Lord has done in my life if I haven't heard anything from Him this morning, and I will share it with you. Be ready. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. That hope that you have, we've talked about that in church so many times. The hope that we have, Jesus is our hope. He's the reason we actually get up and actually live on this earth. If there was no Jesus, seriously, just working for a salary and trying to survive, that wouldn't be fun. But Jesus gives us a reason to live. But do you have an answer for that when somebody says, um, asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have? Do you have an answer ready for them? Or are you going to Google it? 1 Peter 3.15 says, um, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks and give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. You see, we are never arrogant in our faith or anything like that. We never actually know more than the next person. Don't ever come out as a know-it-all. But with gentleness and respect, be ready to answer people. So Philip was ready. What's the second thing Philip had that maybe we don't have? What would you say it is? Anybody want to shout out an answer? He was, somebody's thinking it, gift obedient, hey? It's exactly what was, came to you straight after I said it. He was obedient. Philip was obedient. Do you know that that is all God needs from you to be able to use you in his kingdom? He just needs you to be obedient. He just needs you to stick up your hand and say, here I am, Lord. But so often we say, here I am, Lord. Use my brother. You know, use, use Carsten, Lord. He's, he knows more than I do. Just use him, Lord. I'll pray for him. <laughs> no, no. Step up. Do you know how many times I'm sitting in a restaurant or, or, or just in a, in a random place, and Lord, God says to me, go tell that person their number is coming up. And I, I always wonder what that means. And, and I know it doesn't mean, you know, you're next to die kind of thing. I know that that's not what it means. I know it means that God's saying, I've been speaking to people and they haven't been doing it. Your number's coming up. Are you ready? And I want to say that to you today. Are you ready and are you obedient? If the Lord speaks to you, do you just go? I was talking to a friend about blind faith the other day. We almost need blind obedience. The Lord says, go and do it. You do it. Philip is doing this amazing job in Samaria. And the, the, an angel comes to him and, then, and says to him, go, go down the desert road. So he stops this amazing work that he's doing and he goes down a desert road. It doesn't say why he must go down the desert road. It just says, go down the desert road. Okay, so he goes down the desert road. Then, he's, then he sees this chariot, okay, come past, and he's probably thinking, oh, that's, I, I don't know how often they saw uh, these dignitaries come through, but, he, you know, there was blue flashing lights and, and all of that kind of stuff. And he, he, he looked at it, and, and I wonder if he didn't think to himself, I wonder what that's about. But he, he's just being obedient, and maybe he's still moving, but the angel says to him, go pull up next to that chariot. So he goes and runs next to this chariot, I, I can imagine that, I, I call it spidey senses, you know, all his spidey senses are going, like, like, what does the Lord want me to do here? And then he hears the guy reading from Isaiah 53, and he's like, aha, I see what you're doing, Lord. But if Philip had never gone down that desert road, if he had never run next to that chariot, would the Ethiopian ever have known about God? Maybe later, but... Not that day. He was obedient. James 1, to 25 says this. It says, Do not merely listen to the word 
and so deceive yourselves. So when you come to church or, or when you read the Word, when you listen to all the sermons you like to listen to on, on YouTube, don't just let them tickle with your ears. Do not merely listen to the Word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone, anyone who listens to the Lord but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. God asks us to be obedient. Obedient to his voice and obedient to his word. And you know, when we, when we preach from the pulpit sometimes, we, we, we're very aware of the fact that we don't always want to offend people. Um, you know, we, we, we do it in doses, you know. I'll, I'll offend you over a couple of weeks, um, just so you don't realize you're being offended. But sometimes you just need to say it out straight. You know, if, if this scripture is saying, don't merely listen to the word of God and then not do it, what do you do with Matthew 28, 19 that says, go into all of the world and make disciples of all nations? baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. How are you doing with that scripture? Are you obeying that word, or is that one scripture you've just memorized? Because if you've heard it, you need to actually do it, is what James is saying. God needs us to be ready, and He needs us to be obedient. When I get up in the mornings, and, and my kids and I get in the car, and I'm going to go drop them off at school, I often pray, and I say, God, today is a whole new adventure. I mean, His mercies are new every day. Every time that sun comes up, it's just there's a new adventure. I don't know what God's up to. I think that's something like Philip. I think he was just, maybe he got up at 3 in the morning because he was so excited about this new day and the Lord was going to use him. And he was just ready and obedient. Let's go, Lord. And so often in the church, we sit and we wait. Now, now, Lord, you haven't said anything to me today, but he said, but I have told you in Matthew 28, 19 to go make disciples of all nations, and you haven't done it yet. Are you discipling somebody? I think I asked that question last week. Are you discipling somebody? Because if you're not, you're not being obedient to the Word of God. Then you're just like somebody who looks at himself in the mirror. Um, what does it say? Someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. I don't want to be that kind of a person. We should be good at sharing the Word of God. As believers, we should be good at sharing the Word of God. This is God's Word that He gave to us, and we should know it. You should be able to answer. So be ready, be obedient. That was Philip. We're going to look at the Ethiopian now. The Ethiopian eunuch. So we're introduced to this guy, and um, he represents many people who are religious, who read scripture, go to church, seek truth, love God, yet they do not have a saving faith in Jesus Christ. We have a lot of that in South Africa. We have a lot of people that know God, they know the Bible. They've been to church their whole life. Their, their parents have dragged them off to church their whole life. We are a very religious nation, but we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We do not have a saving faith in Jesus Christ. We do not know that saving faith. We have not experienced it. That's our country. So when you talk to somebody and say, do you know Jesus? They often will say yes. But I met somebody the other day and I was talking to them and I said to them, how are you doing with the Lord? Do you know Jesus? Man, I've been going to church my whole life. I said, but have you ever surrendered your life to Jesus? Have you ever said yes to Jesus? No, I haven't done that yet. So he's like this Ethiopian eunuch that, that, that knows God. I mean, this guy, this guy was reading scripture. So... so um, not that I need to go too, too much into it, but, but the Ethiopian eunuch, he couldn't, he couldn't be a, a, a convert to Judaism because of his, because of his um, what's the word? How do I say that nicely? Um, huh? 
No, not ethnicity. The fact that he had been castrated. But, uh, uh, yeah, the fact that he had been... I was trying to look for a nice word for that, and I just couldn't find one. Huh? <laughs> Discipline, Dion. <laughs> My word. Um, let me just get myself here quickly. <laughs> just give me a second or two. It was his, huh? Michael, that is such a nice word. Brokenness. Dion, you hear that? <laughs> um, you know what? Um, Dieter, you're also right, though. Ethnicity. It's both. And, and so he couldn't be a complete convert to, to Judaism. He, he couldn't be a complete convert. He could just be a God-fearer. In fact, when he went to the temple courts, he'd have to stand where the Gentiles stood. This is the man we are talking about here, okay? But he, he's obviously, there's something that's drawing him to God, and he's reading Scripture, and he knows about it. At this stage of his life, I just think he's okay to be a God-fearer and, and worship from the Gentiles um, part of the temple. He, he was okay to just be there. But he was seeking and this is how cool God is, because God is, God is intentional. God is so intentional when it comes to people knowing Jesus. And if you had to think about it this morning, when you came to the Lord, think about the process or, or um, the, the, this, what led up to you giving your life to Jesus, surrendering your life to Jesus. I think about how patient God was with me. Because, I mean, I, I try to fake it um, and, and, and pretend that I stuck my hand up in church and I've told my testimony before. But God was, God, God was patient with me. But, but through a series of events and people and He started to sow seed in my life, it led to a point where I just could not say no to Jesus Christ in my life and surrendered my life to Jesus. And here's this guy going down the road. Remember that he could not be accepted fully as a Jew. He, he couldn't be a, a total convert because of his, his um, brokenness and his ethnicity. But remember now that Jesus has come and died on the cross. And that's actually all taken away. And God goes and meets this guy on the road. I don't know how long it took Philip to get to where he met the Ethiopian eunuch. But God started planning it there already. God started planning it there. He met him here at the exact time that he's reading Isaiah 53. When he's reading this, the piece about the, the, the text about Jesus Christ. And he's like, who is this? Who is, um, and this is when Philip comes next to him and explains the, the, the part of the text that says, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. And, and, and Philip's like, do you understand what you're reading there? And he's like, no, how, how can I if nobody's taught me? That gets me to this scripture that I, that I, I, I so often share in, in church. Uh, Romans 10, 13 to 17. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, Even if you previously could not be a complete convert. How then can they call on the, the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And if you do that one backwards, how can anyone preach unless they are sent? He was sent, but he was ready and obedient. And Philip was sent, and then he preached the word, and then the word was heard. And then he came to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Came to understand what Jesus had done for him. Not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, that, oh, I don't need to read that part. But church, we need to be preaching the word of God. Nobody's going to hear it unless we preach it. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. 
How many of you just, uh, when, you, when you're ready to plant your vegetable garden, just walk outside, walk to the back door and throw the seed? Anybody do that? I, I don't think anybody does that. It's, 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 it's the same with the Word of God. Man, we go and we speak to them, we help them to understand the Word of God, and when they understand the Word of God, it heals a crop 30, 60, and 100 fold. And that's what I want to see. I want to see that harvest. That's why we pray Luke 10 verse 2. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, for the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. I would have loved it if that prayer was actually the other way around. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, for the workers are plenty, but the harvest is few. But actually he's saying the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few, and here we sit. And I ask you again, church, are you ready? Are you obedient like Philip was? I read this little illustration, and I'm just going to read it to you. Um, in October 1857, anybody born then? Okay. J. Hudson Taylor began to minister in Ning, Ningpao, China, and he led a man to Christ. The man was overjoyed and wanted to share his faith with others. And he asked um, Hudson Taylor this question. He said, how long have you had the good tidings in England? And Taylor acknowledged that England had known the gospel for many centuries. So the China, Chinese man said, My father died seeking the truth. Why didn't you come sooner? And Taylor had no answer to that penetrating question. And I think there's people like that in the world. They get to know the truth of Jesus Christ and they think of their family members that did not know the truth and they wish that somebody had come sooner. So two questions for you this morning. How long have you known the gospel? Just answer that in your head. How long have you known the gospel? And then the second question is, how far have you shared it personally? How far have you shared it personally? How long have you known it and how far have you shared it? This is how cool God is. He is so intentional about meeting us. Jesus said, nobody comes, to the, nobody comes to me unless the Father draws them. Hey, So God, I believe God is constantly drawing people. People close their ears to the truth through, through many different lies. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to share one lie here. I'm going to maybe throw myself under the bus here and, and cause a little bit of a problem. But one of the lies that is often spoken over Africa is that Christianity is a white man's religion. And so many people close their ears to the gospel because it was a white man's religion. But you know that that's a lie from the pit of a hell. It was not a white man's religion. People brought the gospel to Africa. Some of them had good intentions. Some of them got greedy. I can't answer for the ones that got greedy. But those that came to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that was their heart's desire. They left their families and never saw them again. Those guys came to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because they received the gospel of Jesus Christ and they just wanted to share it with others. We've got to honor them. But it wasn't their religion that they were sharing. It wasn't their story they were telling. They were telling the good news of Jesus Christ that was brought to them as well by the early church. It was scattered. The word of God was going all over the world. A white man did not meet the Ethiopian eunuch on the road. Philip was not a white man. But I want to tell you how intentional God is. But at the same time, I need to warn you that the devil is just as intentional about spreading lies. He's the father of lies. So he can get people to believe that this is just a white man religion. People are going to close their ears to the truth of Jesus Christ. So 
God meets this Ethiopian eunuch on the road. He meets this African guy on the road. And he gives him the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gets him to read the exact text that he needs to read when Philip pulls up next to him. And this guy comes to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He's so excited about, about the story that he's hearing. And we don't know how long Philip is in the chariot with him. I, I, I don't think it was five minutes. I want to say it was a while. Because I, I can just imagine Philip just telling him everything. Because at some point they got to the point of baptism. And the eunuch's like, hey, there's water. What stops me? What stops me from getting baptized? Nothing. Nothing stops me from getting baptized. And we so often say that at, the water, at baptism, here's the water, what's stopping you from getting baptized? But you've got to understand what this meant to this Ethiopian. Is he, was, he, want, he so desperately wanted to be a part of the, this, this um, religion, if you can say, this, this wonderful story, the, this God that created the heavens and the earth. He's, he's followed the story. He knows this. He so wanted to be a part of it, but he couldn't be a part of it because of his ethnicity and his brokenness. But now he gets this opportunity to, ex to be accepted by Jesus Christ. He accepts Jesus Christ, understands what Jesus did on the cross for him, and then he can get baptized so that he identifies with Jesus Christ. He's no longer an outsider. He does not have to be in the Gentiles part of the temple. He can come right into the throne room of God. You have to understand what an amazing thing happened that day for this Ethiopian. It was an amazing, it's an amazing story. And we have that same story and we can go take it to anybody. I don't care where you've come from, what you've been through in your life, what sins you've committed, what your brokenness is or your ethnicity, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you so that you can become a child of the living God. That you can, anybody in our church can get baptized in this water. If you are saying, I understand Jesus Christ, I, I know who he is, I know what he's done for me, to identify with Jesus Christ. Where is my phone? I, sorry, my Bible doesn't do verse uh, 37, but I think my phone does. So in some scriptures you'll see that that verse, um, um, verse 37 is missing in Acts. Okay? It doesn't mean it was translated incorrectly. Or, it just means other manuscripts had it. But whatever they, verse 37 says, still lines up with God's heart. Okay? It doesn't change the gospel at all. So don't throw it out. And Philip said, if thou, best, <laughs> if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Have you got it? Yeah. I'm not good at King James yet. Why can't I be baptized? And some manuscripts add the verse 37. You can, Philip answered, if you believe with all your heart. And the eunuch replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He said, you may be baptized. You, might, you may identify as a child of the living God. And so this morning we have four people getting baptized. So while they go get changed, we're going to ask them this question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe what he did on the cross for you? Yes, I believe. Then you may be baptized. Catherine, Lizzie, Gifty, where's Jermaine? Is he napping somewhere? He pulled an all-nighter and then he's uh, working all night, I must say, just in case they thought you were doing something else all night. <laughs> so. Now, yeah. Can I have somebody go fetch it? Oh, wife's going to go. Um, Cherise, why don't you come and make that announcement quickly? Since there's four young people getting baptized this morning. We're going to celebrate this baptism this morning because God really laid it on their heart. And I think it's just so exciting that they want to identify um, with Christ. That they've come to this. Yeah, I've got one for you. Um, so we're going to pray for them this morning. And remember that when they come out the water, I want us to surround them and pray with them and, um, and really just speak into their lives good morning church can we have the poster 
Okay, uh, I just want to announce you, it's that time of the year again where we have our JCY this year's a mission trip and not a camp. Uh, so we will be going to Swaziland. The aeroplane's just there for aesthetics. We don't have to fly there. We're driving there. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll be going to Swaziland on the 29th of November until the 1st of December. Uh, it is for the youth, so ages from 13 all the way up to 19. Um, and then it's 750 rand, which includes the transport, the food, accommodation, and all the activities that we'll be doing uh, there as well. So if the space is limited this time, not like the normal every December camp. So if you know of somebody that wants to go or if your children want to go, please come and put their names up. Uh, they obviously need a passport. We're not smuggling anybody over the fence. Okay, so they need a passport and they will be picked up here and taken to, we're going to Pasture Valley, so they will be taken to Pasture Valley and they will be brought in, brought back safely, hopefully. <laughs> Sheldon, I don't know about your kids, they always get injured. But they will <laughs> be brought, brought back safely. And um, yeah, so, and if you would like to sponsor somebody, please also come and speak to Rogan uh, and I. 750 is not that much. It's literally a family's bill at spur if you think of it like that. Um, so if, you can, if you're willing to give up two spur meals, if you have a smaller family and you don't eat that much, you can send somebody to the, to the mission trip. Uh, so, and even if you can't sponsor the whole amount, but you have an amount that you would like to give towards uh, people, we already have people that want to go but just cannot afford it. Thank you. That's like just starters, 7.50. Anyway. Cheapest international ticket you can fly, buy in South Africa is to Matsapa, Swaziland. So, yeah, it's like 2,000 Rand, but it's still cheaper to do it the way you guys are going to do it. I think it's so exciting that our young people are going to um, Swaziland and going to go do outreach this year. I think it's really, really exciting. So, so just as we wait for them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close in prayer. And um, yeah, um, and Father, I pray that, that as we looked at Philip's life and the Ethiopian's life, if we just, as we looked at your heart and how intentional you are and how you just lined everything up and how you reached down from heaven to reach that Ethiopian eunuch, Lord, and just to love on him and accept him as he is, Lord. I can only imagine what a great day that was for him, Lord. And I know, Father, that there's many people that feel exactly like him in this world. I felt totally broken and far from you at a stage in my life, Lord. And yet, Lord, you came and you wrapped your arms around me, Lord. And you just loved me. And you said, you are my son, my beloved son, in fact. And I thank you for that, Lord. I pray, Father, that as a church, that we would be unashamed of the gospel. That we would be ready, Lord. And that we would be obedient, Lord. And that we would start to hear testimonies in this church of people who are obedient. And just stepped out. Just felt the Lord said, I must go. And so you went. And, uh, and, and Lord, we're going we're gonna to share about the wonderful things that you have done. So I pray, Lord, that you would um, just look after us as we go out this week. And, 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 and Lord, may we just see every day as an adventure, uh, an adventure that you've already planned out, Lord, that you are already part of. And may we just join you in doing the amazing things that you are already doing, Lord. Um, may we just be your light and your love in this world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Hey, kids. You guys have a good time? Good. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move this thing quickly. Oh, just push it against the wall. All right, remember that when they come out the water, it'd be great if you guys could come and just surround them and pray for them. So we've got Lizzie and Catherine, and then Jermaine and Gift. Um, it's going to be good. Good. There they are.
All right. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? There we go. Uh, good morning. Uh, what a privilege this morning for me to uh, baptize my two youngest. Just uh, Sheldon, just hold for that. Just not now, right? Um, I just want to uh, share three things with you quickly. It'll be quick anyway. Um, one that's amazing how the devil always tries to put a spoke in the wheels. Um, it's um, on Friday. I uh, had a tumble, but God made sure that I didn't hurt myself too badly. Because uh, the outcome could have been very different. I fell from the roof and uh, the washing line caught me. <laughs> so, that certainly was a, was a blessing. And then secondly, we need to just take cognizance of the fact that when Peter said, when Peter baptized 3,000 people, uh, I don't think he was alone when he was doing the baptism because it took only, if you did the math on a nine-hour day, it was every 10 or, 10 or 11 seconds that they were able to baptize somebody. If they had to do 3,000 for that day, because they said in one day that 3,000 were added, right? 3,000 were added. So they baptized 3,000 people. So this could be a very quick thing, or we can drag it out. <laughs> and then uh, the third thing is uh, the scripture that I want to just say uh, before I baptize them, which is in, yeah, <laughs> Isaiah 3, verse 10. Tell them that the righteous enjoy the fruits of their deeds. All right. I think uh, I'm going to give them a chance just to say why they want to be baptized. Who's first? Uh, hi. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Catherine. Um, I decided... Who do you I decided to get baptized because one God told me to, <laughs> but he told me to a long time ago. And I had this idea in my head that I had to be this perfect being in order to get baptized. I thought that there could not be a scratch on me in order for me to give my life to the Lord. So I spent so long trying to perfect myself. But then I realized that I don't need to be. I, I want to bring my problems and solve them with the Lord. Bring them to the Lord instead of try and solve it by myself. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I have accepted the Lord as my Lord and Savior but I also want to give my life to him so that he can use me in ways like never before. A confession of your faith. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, hi, I'm Lizzie. Um, yeah, I have a similar story to Peggy. Um, uh, the Lord told me to get baptized like a long time ago, like earlier this year. And I've been like putting it off because like I don't want to do it alone. And then I recently like got signs and, and everyone, was tell everyone was talking about baptism. And then I felt that that was God saying, now, do it now. You've been putting it off too long. And so I've 
That's why I've decided to get baptized. Um, yeah. Elizabeth, even even the neighbors heard that. On confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, 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 don't, I, I presume that, okay, you know what? My name is Gift. Um, I'm usually there in the back in the media team. Um, so if there's any, if there has been any delays with the lyrics, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why did I decide to baptize? Um, I, I, would, I would tell you guys my, my whole journey, you know, growing spiritually, but, uh, I don't think it would leave church. It would, it would leave late. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> but basically, yeah, you know, everything seemed like roses and peaches throughout my life as a kid, and then reality hit when my parents uh, divorced. Uh, you know, after that, I was with my mom, my beautiful and wonderful mom. Um, it's her birthday, by the way. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know. She raised me. She raised me to be the man that I am today, and I'm I'm grateful for the Lord, you know, to blessing me for blessing me with the people that are in my life, you know, especially because my father wasn't there for the most part. I mean, he's my dad and everything, you know. I don't hate him, but uh, you know, he's the Lord. I know he's also my father in heaven, but he has blessed me with father figures all around in the church, and with my friends too, you know. Uh, they were the ones who motivated me to grow spiritually. And so, you know, in grace, I did take the step, um, you know, to give my, uh, to, to be saved, you know, uh, give my life to Jesus. But now I am ready to take the giant leap um, <laughs> towards Jesus Christ, you know, and give my 110% for him and let everyone know wherever I go that, you know, Jesus is there, you know, and he's the, as in John 14, verse 6 says, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus says, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, <laughs> and no one comes to the Father except through me. And, yeah. Gift on confession of your faith, I baptize you, what a privilege, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jermaine. Some of you will know me as the way and Winston's grandson and son. Um, I chose to get baptized now because it was a thought for a while and I was always waiting for the right time but it just it never happened. I wanted to wait to get closer to God and it just felt like I was going further away. 
and I had accepted, I had acknowledged that he was Lord, that Christ was Lord, but I hadn't accepted it. And I hadn't accepted his love, and now I have. So. Man, on confession of your uh, of your faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Church, this is so exciting that these young people are getting baptized, but we're not finished with them yet because I'd like them to stand here and we're just going to surround them and pray for them. Um, you can pray for all four of them if you want, but I'm going to just ask the four of you to come and stand here and the church will come around you and pray. If you have a prophetic word for them, give them a word. Um, and uh, yeah, we're so excited about the world, what the Lord's doing. Come stand here, kids. All right, come on up, and then uh, we're going to have some tea and coffee and fellowship together.